I wouldn't be surprised, though, again, I think the Presidential Secrets Act charge is among the weaker of the cases that have been following Donald Trump. And it will be difficult for the Justice Department to indict him and not to invite Vice President Joe Biden, now president, who also had documents when he wasn't president of the United States. And while he has been president of the United States, at his residence in Delaware and other properties, including a garage next to his prized Corvette, you, it, it's difficult, even if the level of documents uh, seized are different, and the fact that Biden voluntarily opened up various places for search, the, the charges, the crimes are essentially the same, the, the charge, the, the breaking of secure documents or maintaining them after you left office. So I think it creates a little problem for President Biden. For, for Donald Trump, it's sort of business as usual. Every prosecutor that attacks him or that indicts him is part of a witch hunt, and there is a base of his voters that believe this. In some ways, with some primary Republican voters, this emboldens him. He will be in Georgia this weekend speaking at the state party convention. He continues to receive loads of free airtime from outlets like CNN that had another town hall for him yesterday, and it's harder for the other GOP candidates, other than Governor Ron DeSantis of Florida, to gain attention, traction, and fundraising. Um, so this, in some respects, actually helps him. Well, I think it's on the on the one end, I think it's important to point out that's from a lot of the legal experts, Jonathan Turley, uh, Professor Jonathan Turley of Georgetown, Andrew McCarthy, and and a number of others, they believe that on the two charges, there was the obstruction of judge, as far as the records case, that there was the obstruction of justice component of it, but also the records, the records violation itself. And it seems as if, at least if you listen to them, that they think that Donald Trump, if he will be indicted, that it will be on the obstruction charge. Um, I think that this is something, oh, Bill is right, this is something that would ultimately help Donald Trump. If you look at even the discussion of the indictments back in December in the Monmouth University poll in New Hampshire, Ron DeSantis was leading Donald Trump by double digits. Well, look at what the numbers are now. Uh, Donald Trump, his numbers, depending on which poll you look at, Donald Trump is about 40 points ahead of Ron DeSantis. So this is something, these indictments, there are a lot of people, I'm sure, who already have a problem with Donald Trump and who will see this as problematic and it will be further uh, reasons for them not to support Donald Trump. But as far as his base, and I wouldn't even just say his base, I talk to many people here in Washington, D.C., who, who look at the Stormy Daniels case and say, hmm, not too sure about that one. And even in this um, obstruction of justice or records violation case, they do look at that a bit differently than what's happening in Georgia. Whether or not Trump is ultimately indicted in Georgia, I don't know. But it wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised at this point, since it seems as if that the um, Department of Justice, if you think about the Mueller investigation that came up with nothing, the recent Durham report, um, there's a lot of ammunition that the federal government and many of Trump's opponents have given many Trump supporters to believe that there definitely is a witch hunt against Donald Trump. 